All right. For our third topic today, we wanted to discuss uh, some some recent research that's been published uh, talking about how be, how being bullied changes the brain. And it went into detail as far as just, you know, the parts of the brain that were changed and, you know, then, you know, kind of giving some thoughts as far as what that would mean or why that would, you know, like what, what kind of effects that would have. But I mean, to me, the, 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 the biggest piece about it was that these these when we're talking about bullied, we're talking about ongoing type of thing, like not something like, like somebody is antisocial to you one time or whatever. And you never see that person again, but kind of that ongoing thing and how when that happens in adolescence and, and yet for young people, it can affect them throughout their life. Not just, you know, where we would think psychologically, well, like that's kind of known, you know, but that, that if it's extreme, it can affect psychology, but actually the, the, the physical changes in the brain, you know, which we know the brain's dynamic and does adapt and change based on our experiences and so forth. So I just wanted to kind of get your takeaways on that. And, and also, you know, I do want to get to at some point in this conversation, just kind of whether society's doing enough or, you know, is, is, has done enough or whether they have not done enough on dealing with, with bullying, you know, as our societies get more and more crowded. Yeah. That's a good point at the end about the fact we're getting more and more crowded. Cause I just feel like obviously bullying has been around since, you know, before we were humans. I mean, you look at a chimpanzee or baboon yeah. tribe, yeah. They're, they're bullying each other. Yeah, yeah. Primates are doing it. So it's clearly part of the, um, of our primal existence. Um, and so I do think, but it's a good point you make that as, as you know, we have 8 billion humans now, not 1 billion or, or half a billion. Um, you know, I guess with more proximity, we could see more behavior like this. Um, but no, it's, it's, I find this type of research fascinating actually, um, because it, it continues to, you know, the, the research in this area of this kind of the development of our brains continues to improve and it continues to, um, have me believe that many of our, maybe this goes back into what we just discussed, uh, you know, earlier in this, in this, in our show this, uh, today about free will or the lack thereof. And, you know, the, the idea of things like trauma in childhood and how all of us experience the world in the first, let's say 15, 20 years of our lives, um, really does seem to have some sort of hardening effect and affects the rest, how we deal with our own existence for the rest of the journey, you know, while we're adults and, and into older age. And so that's why to me, this is very interesting because obviously I would assume that um, persistent bullying could affect someone's um, behavior or how they see themselves or all that stuff as they get older. But what I found interesting about this article is now the research is done to confirm that. And that's what the article is discussing about, you know, someone that's heavily bullied, um, or at, and it was talking about how as a teenager, like around 14, 15 years old, that the parts of the brain that are still developing and yeah. haven't hardened yet. And it's just, it's understandable when you read that stuff that, yeah, if someone's brain is forming at a time where they're under a high level of stress constantly, yeah, then yes, it makes sense that when they're in their 40s or 50s, they may have a difficult time dealing with stress or even their own emotional state, like dealing with themselves. And I think that's real. And then we see how that manifests out now when you're looking at older people and how they behave sometimes. Um, when I say older, I just mean adults, people our age and, and maybe even older. Because um, I've seen over my lifetime just adults behave in a way where I realize, man, that person is not – they're not responding to that actual thing in the moment. Seems like they're triggered off some sort of emotional memory that this thing brought yeah. back. And it's like real. Like they – like that thing just happened to them that happened 20 years ago. So almost, I guess maybe as I say that, I realize bullying appears to be a form of, uh, uh, or create a lasting form of PTSD. Um, yeah. And that yeah, people yeah, are kind yeah. of yeah, triggered. Putting you know, it in another yeah. context. Yeah. 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 I think um, I, I found the studies to be very interesting. I and mean, we'll have, you know, link to it, links to, to, to the piece that we were getting this from in the show notes. But uh, I found that the them observing the physical changes was was very interesting. It was spe it, to me, it was very speculative on okay, well, this means this, or this me, or this is happening because of this. Obviously, you got to start somewhere. I mean, that's stuff that you have to continue to to to, to flesh out. Um, I think that though, when we're talking about this, I think you put it in a, in a good frame in terms of bullying. It, it, it manifests itself for a person as stress, you know, like, and so, yes. And we, if you said that stress at a young age or at any age can change the brain, nobody would be like, Oh, if people are like, Oh yeah, yeah, of course. Like we kind of are give, gathering that. And so, and then, you know, like you said, the, the PTSD type of thing, uh, because that high level of stress 
concentrated in a moment and then you were talking about a time when b- the brain is rapidly rapidly developing then yes you know like this is it, it, it's almost like of course but how can we do or like how, how can, does this make it more urgent or is this like okay we're confirming something that we kind of already felt which is i'm kind of in that latter territory so to me the the question i have and the, where i go to a lot of times is okay well are we doing enough either as a society and are we doing the right things as a society because yeah i we both thought back to the idea of like, well, primates do this kind of stuff. You look at, you know, like a, a troop of chimpanzees and something, you'll have get people that are bullying, people that are getting bullied. And one of the things that you and I have talked about, and I think you shared a story with me one time as far as how to deal with that, like how individuals or these troops deal with bullies is, is not about necessarily an in, one individual standing up and just, you know, putting their foot down and, and fighting back, so to speak. But it's always about a group, you know, like so you have a, a, a coalition of people who, who bind together and are able to then withstand or make themselves not a target. Because instead of if you're going to bully one person, that's a different target than if 10 people are together in an alliance, so to speak, or a coalition. Like if you bully one of them, all 10 of them are coming back at you. And so these types of techniques also go back into our primal nature, so to speak. And so I, I just wonder, like, while it's it, our society right now focuses a lot on adults intervening and, 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 and making sure that this kind of stuff is minimized or limited or leaving less space for this type of stuff to happen. But, you know, our approaches to dealing with bully bullying may need to evolve as well, because what we're seeing here is just, OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. this stuff is serious. It does create lasting and lasting effects. And so. Let's try to do stuff that can help people learn how to not make themselves a target or keep themselves from being a target yeah. or how to to work with other people to then or, or seek out other people who they can who potentially can they can stand with to not allow themselves to be a target of it. And so I just I wonder if that, enough of that is happening as far as, hey, here's yeah. how you can not make yourself as, as prone to bullying. And ironically, the more being more crowded potentially opens up more avenues for that because yeah. this is a much harder situation to deal with if it's a group of 10 kids or eight kids and one kid gets picked on and it's like well you don't have many options for people to stand with them but if it's 100 then it's like hey you might be able to make some connections there to, to, to help yourself out you know it's a good movie that that uh, actually shows that this this will show our age as well to younger people <laughs> remember the movie revenge of the nerds <laughs> I mean, seriously, because I'm thinking about each guy, each one of those guys on their own <laughs> wouldn't have lasted two days in that school. Yeah. But they actually had their little community of the nerds, right? They were able to yeah. get their revenge. So so it is, yeah, you're right. That um and and I'll give you a different example. Again, give you my anecdotal me example. So <laughs> I was having some, you know, um, and I've never had anything really bad happen with the cops, but you know, I was getting pulled over a bit and um and um Worried that, you know, they looking at me, you know, where I live and stuff like that and getting curious. So I did a test and I, I went and bought some military T-shirts, like Navy SEALs T-shirts. I started wearing those. I, I stopped getting pulled over. <laughs> and I just, you know what I realized? Because I, I feel you're, bullies don't like somebody that has some sort of network, right? Yeah. yeah. And I realized that, you know, in the alpha male world, you know, you got a cop here, but then they might look at military and say, okay. But then they also probably thinking that, okay, if this guy is in some sort of elite part of the military, he's probably got a network. If I mess this guy up, I'm probably going to have to answer to somebody tomorrow. And it's funny. It worked. And and it's sad to say you that, you know. That you have connections, you know, like yeah. that's, it, that's very interesting. And so yeah, the point is, is that at 46 years old in my own country, I got to behave like this to avoid potential bullying from representatives of the state, right? Like if we want to get really technically about it. But it's but it's like you're saying it's it's a tactic to to say okay let me let me let me get through this stuff so I don't have to deal with maybe somebody's attitude if they're looking to treat me a certain way and I think that's the real sad thing I think reading this about how the long term negative effects on human beings is from bullying because I feel like part of what we're seeing also um, and I don't want to get too esoteric with this but I guess I'm gonna, I guess I will now that I said that um, Apparently you're heading down that road <laughs> yeah I'm heading down that road <laughs> but I almost feel like sometimes the way we deal with each other in our own culture in America I see like it's a bunch of adults who have this collective trauma from their own childhood of something could be abandonment could be bullying could be child abuse 
Because it's like you're saying um, in the prior discussion we just had about the platform Twitter X, um, what surprised me was once Elon Musk bought it and took the guardrails off, the glee and excitement that so many of our fellow Americans had running in there saying, I can finally use the N-word. I can finally be anti-Semitic. And, I, and I, that I to go, me I was just, I can finally go treat other people like dirt. You know, correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like yeah. basically saying that I can finally, I can finally dominate someone else. That kind of was the end message, right? Without being, uh, you know, interrupted to do that. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I'm saying. Like, that's when I was like, well, that's just a different type of mindset to me. Like, I'm, I'm just not frothing at the mouth to go hurt someone else. But that's also because I wasn't hurt when I was a kid. I wasn't bullied in that way. I wasn't hurt by my mom or, you know, my family didn't abandon me or beat me or anything. So I'm an adult that doesn't want to, you know, I don't walk around either subconsciously wanting to put pain on someone else or consciously getting some sort of satisfaction from hurting someone else. But I'm realizing, and I guess because of all the social media and all this discourse we have, there's so many people in our country as adults, not kids, because we know kids can act, you know, all kinds of ways. But as people our age or even older that are, they get like a joy, this schadenfreude or this, I want to own this other group or this other person. And it's just, it's sad, but I think that's a, that's an offshoot of trauma from when they were young. Uh, so it's, it's interesting to learn all this stuff. It's quite, quite a diagnosis, Dr. Tunde. Yes, sir. <laughs> I did but, stay at a Holiday Inn last night. Hey, hey, there you go. So come well, back I mean, for I, the mar- come back for the marriage counseling conversations. Those are fun. <laughs> so, I actually put my glasses on in my lab coat. Oh yeah, you gotta gotta <laughs> have the glasses for that one, man. It, to be believable. <laughs> so, but no, I, I, I mean, I, I, I can follow what you're saying. I mean, I think that some of that though is again go back to like the the the, the documentaries you can go watch on chimpanzees or you know whatever you know like the, these primates, and you will see. You know, these types of behaviors amongst some of the group and then others, others of the group that know how to band together then to who, the ones who don't walk around looking for somebody to hurt. You know, they have to band together and, and that's how they can deal with stuff like that. So I think that all of these are like my question is more so for the people who want to avoid being bullied and the, the people in society who want to try to make make bu- reduce bullying is is. Well, OK, yes, we should do something, you know, that uh, adults, you know, like, yeah, do something. But at the same time, are we doing enough as far as to make sure people are equipped to to deal with this themselves? Because while I do, th- I, I do believe and uh, I mean, you know, looking at the research that your brain can change based on your exposure to stress at a young age. It can change with your exposure to stress at a young age. Like having the the ability to deal with that stuff is very important. One. And then two. Your brain can change as you continue to age, too. So if you can remove yourself or avoid stressful situations after a period of stressful situations, your brain can can change in other ways, too, and change in positive ways. So we're not like most of the time our bodies are are, are, can evolve over time, you know. And so most of the time you're not stuck with if, you know, if something bad happens at 15, you're just stuck with that forever. It may take effort. It may take work. It may take, you know, making sure the situations you're in are conducive to you being better and so forth. But you know, we're not stuck with, or generally speaking in life, we're not stuck with wherever we are at a given moment. And so the the ability and then forming community, forming community so that you can avoid this. So that you, and that also is a way to be able to heal from this, you know, because community support, you know, are, are ways that you can then kind of unwind some of these negative effects, you know, and so forth. So, but yeah, I mean, I think right, it's, well, you it's, can it's do all that. Or, listen, man, you can do all that or you can just buy a military T-shirt. I was going to say, yeah, you, you, you can... <laughs> Set up a, 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 a call like I see a shop with yeah. military T-shirts guaranteed to stop bu- bullying. The other ones that so. work too. One of my friends, true story, just for the You're giving away all your stuff for free. Nah, man. his dad's a his dad was a firefighter, so oh, when we were okay. in our thirties. He would wear his firefighter T-shirt, so when he got pulled over, his, you know, from the pot cops, again they they, they would that, that quick second of seeing that he might be a firefighter would get them to you know. Not approach him in a certain way. <laughs> so, that's, that's, that's wild. That's so wild. the new, the new, the new, this thing is just buy the right T-shirt. There you go. There you go. Right, right, right. Pro- project that you are a part of a, group, oh, a larger group. network. Yeah. And exactly. you know, like there, there you go. <laughs> so all right, but I think we can wrap this episode from here. We appreciate everybody for joining us on this episode of Call Like I See It. You know, check out part one, part two if you haven't already. Subscribe to the podcast, rate it, review it, tell us what you think, send it to a friend. Till next time, I'm James Keys. I'm Tunde Romana. All right, we'll talk to you next time.